Hey, yo, what's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Dooley back again with another episode of More Power Sports Talk. Lost Files Episode 6. Yes, Episode 6 of Lost Files, man. This is my 12th episode. Like right there, my boy Tom Brady, number 12. My 12th episode that I'm doing. Very excited, very blessed, you know, since I came this far. Uh, thanks to you guys. Thanks to my subscribers. All 64 of y'all, man. I appreciate it. For sticking it out with me, watching my videos, keep watching. I'm I'm still doing that giveaway for a hundred dollars for my first hundred subscribers. Um, that's coming up once I hit my 99 subscribers. So stay tuned for that. All you gotta do is watch my first six videos and answer three questions that I have in store for y'all correctly. The first person to answer three questions correctly can DM me at blue magic underscore two hundred s. On my Instagram page, that's my car page. The first one to DM me with the right, correct answers for all three questions gets a hundred dollars. I cash up y'all. It's that simple. But make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram at blue magic underscore two hundred s. That's how you win the giveaway money. Hundred dollars cash up is that easy? Just follow, subscribe, man. That's it. Moving on though, my YouTube editing, as you can see. I'm getting better at it, you know what I'm saying? It's a process. I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm definitely excited that, you know what I'm saying, I'm taking the initiative, you know what I'm saying, to, you know what I'm saying, perfect my craft. You know what I mean? I'm not, like I said, I'm new to this YouTube stuff. I'm not the best at it. I'm still learning as I go, you know what I'm saying? But definitely I'm excited for what's to come in the future, though. So like I said, I appreciate y'all for sticking around, my subscribers. I thank y'all for the bottom of my heart, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. As y'all know, a couple of days ago, man, something crazy happened in the U.S. Capitol, man. There was a breach over there. People lost their lives. It was crazy. Um, it's just sad that, you know what I'm saying, we're still going through the same BS year after year. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just tiring. I'm tired of it. I know y'all tired of it. You know what I'm saying? But definitely, you know, we got a lot of work to do as a as a country and as a community. You know what I'm saying? But we got to work together, though. That's, that's the only way that's going to happen. If you all come together, if you all work together... It's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I want peace in this world. I know I know y'all do too. So, you know, but yeah, crazy situation happened to the point where it reached the sports world. And that was with the Saints organization. Uh, they deleted Drew Brees' tweet of him wearing the shirt that says Say Her Name on it. They, they deleted that tweet because they thought that Brees was referencing the Say Her Name to the lady that passed away in the storm breach. And that was uh, Ashley Babbitt, I believe that's how you say her name. Babbitt, I don't know, but actually, yeah, that's the one that lost her life, you know what I'm saying, unfortunately, uh, but yeah, so Saints deleted, Saints deleted his tweet because of that, but it was really because of the Breonna Taylor, that's the reason why he wore the shirt, and he's been wearing that shirt all season, so I would understand why they would delete the tweet if they know that he's been wearing that all season, you know what I'm saying, not only him, but his teammates as well have been wearing the same shirt, the say her name shirt, so, but yeah, but um, like I said, crazy situation that happened last week, man. Uh, but hopefully the rest of the year gets better. I know, no, not if, I know it will get better. You know what I'm saying? Just, y'all just hold on. Keep, you know what I'm saying? Keep fighting, keep praying, keep having a positive mindset, and I guarantee you the rest of the year will be easy saving, man. I promise y'all. I'm going to give y'all the top three shows to binge watch that me and my fiance has been watching uh, for the past couple of days. Um, number one, we got this show on HBO Max. It's called Watchmen with Regina King. That's a great show. Uh, also, we have this show called Alex Ryder on Amazon Prime. That, that's 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 the show that I like to watch. Um, my my sister put me on to Watchmen, and my fiance's mother put me on to um, Alex Ryder. So those are two great shows that we like to watch together. And last but not least, the best show out of all of those shows, though, in my opinion, is Your Honor, and that's with your boy from Breaking Bad. He's the main character of that show. That's a great show too, though. So if you have any shows that y'all want to watch, is Watchmen, Your Honor, and Alex Ryder. And anybody that likes kind of like, you know, like action-packed movies, Jason Bourne type stuff, if you like those kind of movies and shows, you're going to love Alex Ryder too, though. That's a great show. So watch that too. Moving on to sports. Oh, yes. This past Monday, man, the Alabama Crimson Tide took on the Ohio State Buckeyes in the NCAA National Championship matchup. Bama whooped Ohio State all over the field, bro. 52 to 24, man. Nick Saban has won his seventh title as a head coach in the NCAA. Sixth with Alabama. 
He has one title with the LSU Tigers back in 2003. Shout out to Nick Saban and the Roll Tide, man. Y'all did y'all thing out there, man, uh, against Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? People thought Ohio State was going to give them a pretty good fight, but unfortunately, it's just too much power, firepower with Alabama, though. Uh, as, as you guys know, the Heisman winner, Devontae Smith, had a great game. 12 receptions, but get this, 215 yards, and this man almost averaged 20 yards per catch. That's insane. But guess what? He's a Heisen winner. That's what happens. He def he's definitely going to be a first-round pick. I know that for a fact. So shout-out to Devontae Smith for having a great game. And shout-out to the Roll Tide, too. Though. Shout-out to my guy, YK Slim at Alabama, too, bro. I see you doing your thing out there, man. Keep grinding out there on YouTube, man. YK Slim, you already know what time it is. Roll Tide, yes sir. Moving on to the NFL, yes, Wild Card Weekend was crazy, bro. We had six great games, man. Six great games that I couldn't believe happened. Um, let's get into it. Tampa Bay at Washington. The Buccaneers won that game 31 to 23 over the Washington football team. Tom Brady is the oldest quarterback in NFL history to throw for a touchdown pass in a postseason game at the age of 43. 43 years old and still tossing dimes in the end zone. This guy right here, the GOAT, that guy, tossing TDs at the age of 43. That's bonkers. That's crazy. Also, Tom Brady had the most postseason wins in NFL history, too, though, at 31. 31 wins in the postseason. The next guy behind him is Joe Montana, and guess how much he got? 16. 16. The Tampa's offense did a pretty good job. I know they scored 31 points, but they had four trips to the red zone, and out of that, they had three field goals and one touchdown. So, and that was in the first half, I believe. And, you know, it's not a bad stat, though, but when you're going up against Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, or probably even Patrick Mahomes, the bucket, this guy do better on offense. I mean, they got Mike Evans, they got Gronk, they got two great running backs, you know what I'm saying? So there's really no excuse for, you know what I'm saying, the Buccaneers to not probably play up 35-42 in the game. But, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't a bad game overall. They won. That's all that matters. The backup for the rest, I mean, for the Washington football team quarterback, the backup, Taylor Hineke had 306 yards for a touchdown had six carries and 46 yards. Now that now anybody that not anybody that watched that game, he put up a fight because he was the backup. Uh, Alex Smith was hurt because he because um, he had a calf injury though, so that's why he had to come up, step in and play the and play in the game. But um, unfortunately, you know, you're playing against Tom Brady. It's too much. I get it. You know. So in our next game, we had the Buffalo Bills against the Indianapolis Colts. Josh Allen had a playoff win, the first playoff win for the Buffalo Bills since 1994. That's crazy, bro. 20 plus years, man. The Bills won that game 27 to 24. Josh Allen was 26 for 35, 324 yards, two TDs, a rushing touchdown for 50 plus rushing yards. Josh Allen is definitely that guy that's going to be the new AFC East King. I guarantee you that. You know what I'm saying? Tom Brady has passed the torch to Josh Allen. Great quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Um, Stephon Diggs. Having a Pro Bowl, all pro year, man. Six receptions, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Shout out to my guy, Stephon Diggs, man. Doing his thing out there. Uh, the Colts became the first team to lose a playoff game with zero turnovers and over 400 plus yards. That's like almost nearly perfect, and you still lose a playoff game. Uh, I'm not sure about Phillip Rivers' uh, career for the future. I think he has one more year left. I think. Don't quote me. You know what I'm saying? But we'll see. We'll see. Next game we got lined up also was the L.A. Rams against the Seattle Seahawks. The Rams defense, man, they played a great game in this game, man. Uh, Rams won this game 30-20. to John Walford, the quarterback for the Rams, had to leave the game with a neck injury, which caused Jared Goff to come back in the lineup and play in that game. Uh, he had 155 yards passing for a touchdown. Not too bad. Um, but the running back, though, Cam Akers had a great game. He had 28 carries for 131 yards for a TD. So great game for, for um, Cam Akers in this game. Uh, like I said, for the defense, Aaron Donalds had three tackles for two sacks. The defense had five total sacks for two, first, for two forced turnovers 
and it also cost Seattle to be under 300 yards offensively and also to play for under 60 plays in the whole entire game. That's great defense. The fact that they held Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, uh, Lockett, and all them guys on offense to under 300 yards says a lot for the LA Rams defense. So, you guys, I mean, y'all know the motto, defense wins championships. So, big shout out to the Rams for that big uh, win. Uh, but I feel like, in my opinion, the Seattle Seahawks didn't have, I mean, they had a home field advantage, but they really didn't have it only because the 12th man wasn't, you know what I'm saying, present. You know what I'm saying? And usually, uh, with that crowd noise, they know how to distract the quarterback very, very, very easily. So, uh, so there was no fans in that, in that game at all, though. But big win for the Rams, though. They move on to the next round. Our next game that was crazy, that had a lot of drama, a lot of excitement, was the Baltimore Ravens, man. They took on the Tennessee Titans. My boy right here behind me, Steaming Willie Beeman, a.k.a. Lamar Jackson, had a great game. Uh, 17 for 24, 179 yards. But not only that, my man had 16 carries for over 130 plus yards. That's more yards than he had than Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry was the all leading rushing running back this season, this season for 2,000 yards. A 2,000 yard running back only had 40 yards in that whole entire game. And he only had 10 carries for 18 yards in the first half. So great defense by the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Baltimore's defense held Tennessee to 200 yards total throughout the whole entire game. That says a lot too, though. You know what I'm saying? Baltimore, for the past two years, have been known for their offense. But, of course, that defense started to kick in as well during the postseason too, though. Lamar Jackson becomes the second quarterback behind Colin Kaepernick to rush for over 100 yards in two postseason games. So not, my, so not Michael Vick, not Steve McNair. Not uh, Vince Young. None of them guys did that. Not even Steve Young did that. You know what I'm saying? So big shout out to Lamar Jackson, man, for achieving that feat. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy right there, man. Lamar Jackson, man. He's going to be a future MVP again in the future. It might not be next season, though, but he's going to be at least a three-time MVP, bro. Like, he's that special. Our next game we have was the Cleveland Browns against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I thought this game was going to be a blowout. I thought Big Ben was going to win this game with ease. But Baker Mayfield definitely surprised everybody, bro. Uh, they won that game 48-37. to um, The Steelers, they had a bad start. The first possession throughout the whole entire game was a fumble for a touchdown. And after that, it just kind of went downhill. They were down by 28, you know what I'm saying, in the first half. Uh, Big Ben threw for four interceptions. Despite having a 500-yard game and also a 4-TD game, he had five. I mean, he had four turnovers, uh, five total for the offense for the Steelers. The Browns won their first playoff game in 20 plus years as well. So shout out to the Dog Pound for getting that W. Last time that watching well, the last coach to coach that team to win the playoff game was Bill Belichick. So it's crazy too, though. And the last team that they won against was the Patriots. So that's also crazy as well too, though. In my opinion, I feel like the Browns play better without Odell. That's just my opinion. And the stats show too, though. The stats say that with Odell, they're 11 and 12. And without Odell, they're 6 and 3. So what does that tell you? You know what I'm saying? The Browns' offense functions better without Odell in the lineup. There's no shade to him or no shot to him. It's just Baker Mayfield plays better because he gets to distribute the ball, you know what I'm saying, to other players. Uh, big game for also for Nick Chubb. He had, seven, he had 18 carries, 76 yards. Four receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown. So he's also a diverse back, too, though. He can catch the ball out the backfield and run the ball, too, though. Uh, Kareem Hunt had eight carries for 48 yards and two TDs in this game. Uh, Baker Mayfield was 21 for, for 34, 263 yards passing for three TDs. So shout out to the Browns for winning that game. It was a shock to everybody. Steelers, uh, they have a long offseason. You know, Big Ben might retire this season. They might trade him. Who knows? If I was Steelers, I'll keep Big Ben just for the sake of it, though. You know what I'm saying? He is, he is, he is your franchise leader in almost all categories. So why not keep him for another year or two, you know? And our last game of the weekend was the Chicago Bears against the New Orleans Saints. The Saints won that game with ease, 21-3. Drew Brees was 28-39, 255 yards, two TDs. Alvin Kamara had a great game, 99 yards rushing for a TD as well. Michael Thomas came back from injury. He had a great game too, five receptions, 73 yards, was averaging 14.6 yards per catch for a TD. Shout out to the Saints on that crucial, crucial win. Uh, 
you know, and I'm just glad that they bring the fans back in the rooms because I feel like this is the last time that they're going to see Drew Brees in the, in the Saints uniform. Of course, he's going to retire this year. I mean, it's, it's not a question. He's going to retire. This is his hoorah moment, kind of like, you know, with Ray Lewis when he, you know, seeing him retire this last year and he won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. Um, so I feel like the Saints quarterback, Drew Brees, is going to do the same with that too, though. So I'm rooting for Brady because, you know what I'm saying, that's my guy, though. But for the NFC, I'm definitely rooting for Drew Brees too, though. I mean, he's a good guy. I like his character. Um, but, yeah, but big win for the Saints, man. 21-3 to over the Chicago Bears, man. Big, big win. Last but not least, though, of course, this upcoming weekend, we have more NFL matchups. Uh, it's the division round. So for this round, we have the LA Rams taking on the Green Bay Packers and the bad man himself, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, tough challenge for Aaron Rodgers. He has to get away from uh, Aaron Donald. Like I said, he had two sacks the last game against um, his last opponent against uh, Russell Wilson. So that should be a good game. Then after that, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the New Orleans Saints in a third rematch of the season. The Saints are 2-0 against the Buccaneers. Uh, they're playing in New Orleans, I believe. So Tom Brady has another challenge ahead of him. Can he avoid a sweep in the season? He has never been swept before in the whole entire season as far as like, losing two regular season games and then the playoff game to the same team three times. That's never happened. So hopefully Tom Brady in our office can, you know what I'm saying, can score in the red zone or score touchdowns in the red zone and not score field goals in the red zone. After that, we have the Buffalo Bills against the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, sir. Willie Beeman against Josh Allen should be a great matchup between these two young quarterbacks coming out of the same draft. First of all, I'm going to just say this. I have Green Bay winning against the LA Rams. I have the Saints losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because it's Tom Brady. You know how he's in the playoffs. He gets hot. And in this game between the Buffalo Bills and the Ravens, my heart says Lamar, but my mind says Buffalo. Just because I'm a football guy, I feel like Buffalo might win this game because they just have more weapons than uh, the Baltimore Ravens, though. But I'm pulling for my boy. You already know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Florida guy, you already know. Steaming, really beaming for the win in my heart. But Buffalo for my mind. Last but not least, Baker Mayfield against Patrick Mahomes should be a dandy. Uh, Baker Mayfield coming off a huge win against Big Ben. Um, a legendary quarterback in Pittsburgh. Hall of Famer. He's playing against another future Hall of Famer in Patrick Mahomes. Should be a great game. But I got the Chiefs winning this game, I think. I mean, this is not the Steelers. This is Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, and a lot of fast guys on the field, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I got the Chiefs winning this game, man, huge. Uh, but Baker Mayfield, like I said, do not sleep on the Browns in the next couple. This, this is going to be the team to beat in the AFC, too, though. The Browns, the Bills, the Ravens are going to be the teams to be in the playoffs every single year. So, watch out, watch out, watch out. Well, guys, that's it, man. That's all I got for you guys as far as, like, the NFL games this, this weekend. Um... A little NBA news, as you guys know, James Harden is going to the Brooklyn Nets. Crazy, bro. So not only do you have James Harden, you have K KD, Kyrie, in the same lineup. That's crazy, bro. But guess what? LeBron James and the Lakers are not sweating no bullets because LeBron is used to this. LeBron is used to teams trying to join forces to take down the guy. That's, that's been his model his whole entire career. But this has to be the best team assembled that I can ever remember. Like, in my opinion, this is the best big three since the Jordan era. I'm talking about when Jordan had Rodman. It was Jordan, Rodman, and uh, Pippen. That's, this is the best big three lineup I've ever seen, bro. With KD, Kyrie, and Harden, bro. Straight shooting the ball out the gym. I am not joking, bro. So it's going to be a crazy season in the uh, in the um, in the Eastern Conference uh, this NBA season. I don't see no team beating the Nets now. Like in the East, I don't see no team, bro. No team. Uh, shout out to Lonzo, uh, not Lonzo Ball. Shout out to Lamelo Ball, becoming the youngest player to ever record a triple double. Um, he had a um, he's 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 having a good season. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I was a hater in the beginning, but you know, what I'm saying I'm starting to you know what I'm saying. Feel his, you know what I'm saying, feel his, you know, play style a little bit. So, shout out to LaMelo Ball doing his thing out there, though, uh, for the Charlotte Hornets. You know what I'm saying? They're doing the thing out there. Um, 
Uh, that, that's about it, I believe, for the NBA. That's all I got. I mean, I know there's more games ahead, you know, this week, though. So I'm going to get to that. I'm going to give you that footage. And also, for my next episode, I got something to store for y'all. Something that, something that uh, wifey bought me for my birthday, you know what I'm saying? I'm very excited to open it to show y'all what I got, you know what I'm saying? Definitely moving into the photography world a little bit. So that's all I'm going to give y'all as far as, like, my clues. So, but definitely, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do a little unboxing for y'all, show y'all what I got. Kind of tell you my plans of what I have in the future. So y'all stick around for that, man. It's your boy Dooley. Bullpar Sports Talk, episode six, man. Make sure, please, y'all, comment, like, subscribe. Please, please, please. I really appreciate it, man. From the bottom of my heart, like I said, shout out to my subscribers out there. All 64 of y'all. I love y'all. Tell your mama, your papa, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, whoever. Tell them to follow me on Instagram, like I said, at Blue Magic underscore 200S. And also subscribe to my channel at Mopal Sports Talk. I really appreciate it, man. Y'all stay safe out there. Mask up as usual, you know what I'm saying? I thank y'all. Y'all know the motto. Y'all know the lingo. Y'all know my slogan. You are ready. Oh.